Okay. 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 So here we are back in Southeast Asia. And uh, I said I was going to go that I'm doing these dog training videos and going back and talking about one of the things that I originally was very enamored with, and that was dog training. Like I said, there's some previous videos you can look at to get more background on this. And, and what I'm talking about, I did say I was going to go through the whole operant conditioning to clear everything up from all of the sort of uh, dilettantes that are out there on YouTube. But I have gotten some questions and I'm going to go through one of the questions now because I don't see, I haven't seen everybody's dog videos. There's, God, there's thousands on YouTube. Obviously, it's a very, very, uh, I don't want to say exciting, but popular, <laughs> but a popular genre is about dog training. And there's a lot of different dog training things you, you'll find. And I, I'm giving sort of a, of a, of a loose categorization, a taxonomy of what's out there on YouTube. You have a lot of people who are uh, sort of want to be dog trainers who want to get known by putting videos up and acting like an expert that gives them some sort of ego strokes or something. A lot like in the, the foreign language learning groups, that's the same thing. Uh, a lot of them only deal with uh, what we would call like family dogs or just some people just call them companion dogs, but that's a, there's an AKC title with a companion dog. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people whose dogs, they, their training is very loose. Uh, it's not very good really. It's uh, the dogs couldn't compete in anything. And then there are people who try to teach you how to do things a certain way. Like this is one of the things I was covering in the operant conditioning. They're, they're totally uh, enamored with Dunbar or, or Karen Pryor and have gone off. Uh, a lot of people started with clicker stuff and then they've left that behind and started using voice, which is not as good. And there's reasons I will explain that in a different video, uh, <clears throat> but I, I won't go into that right now. And then there are people who uh, do such things as uh, protection dogs. And there are the protection dog sports. And there's lots of different uh, organizations, big ones that are known. Schutzhund, which is, Schutzhund still exists, but at the international level, it's more now IPO. And then there are ring sports. Uh, there is a French ring sport. There is a Belgian ring sport. And then there are, then there's a Kenyan PV, which is the training for the Dutch police dogs. They have to go through this before the, that's sort of a screening and the guys, the civilians train the dogs and they sell them to the police force and then they follow up with them in four weeks of specific training. The dogs are, are well picked and, and well trained. And then there's Mondial Ring, which was trying to be, become the best of, of all the protection things. And they dropped the scent thing because the scent thing and Schutzhahn isn't really accurate tracking. Uh, it's, it's kind of stylized. Like a lot of this stuff is stylized. Personally, I don't haven't done much work with scent stuff so uh, tra and tracking, although a long time ago I got interested in it. I got interested in everything, sled dogs, uh, sporting dogs, uh, hound dog. Uh, and I mean, and there are two different types of hounds. There's a sight hound like uh, Salukis and, and also the greyhound originally. And, and then there are scent hounds, which bloodhounds are well known, although a lot of dog like a Doberman is incredible. A Doberman when it's got no genetic problems, is an incredible dog. Smart, one of the smartest dogs, has great olfactory uh, capability, is quick, is powerful, is better than a German Shepherd, uh, not as, as crazy hyper like a Malinois, which is his favorite thing people are looking. But there's several different Belgian Shepherd dogs. See, the Taruvian, which is a longer furred Belgian shepherding dog, has been used for a very, very long time in protection stuff uh, there's just been a thing towards Malinois because they got a hyper hyper drive uh, th and that's why people who use those dogs and work with those dogs it's not a family pet dog little kids can't be around that dog uh, unless you've got a lot of time and a lot of people just think a dog is like having furniture they don't interact with it you can't do that with these with working dogs you can't, even gray and greyhounds too sporting dogs and working dogs and, and, and sporting dogs all were bred for function and that's in their genetics. And that's one of the part of the things here that I'm going to cover is that drive. There's been a move uh, 
the way, if you look at obedience training and the people who are very good at obedience training, and I'm going to mention some names from the past, uh, like Kohler, who trained over, Jesus, it's way over 14,000 dogs, all breeds, all type. And you find a lot of people who just work with one breed and they become very good with one breed because they, they learn the temperament, disp disposition, and the genetic drives in that particular breed. And you'll find that with, especially like in sporting dogs, you know, pointers, German short, short haired pointers, uh, differences in those setters, uh, retrievers. And then when you get into, into working dogs, like there are a lot of people who just specialize in German shepherds. They're very stable, <laughs> temperament, uh, smart, and uh, people like Strickland. I think anybody's ever, ever matched her, by the way, I think she has more utility dog titles than anybody. Um, she's dead now, but the, she, for, she, Strickland and, and Kohler uh, were two large names. And they train, and she trains shepherds, but Kohler trained everything. And his, their methods are reliable, and they are not food driven. And they're very different than what I'm going to talk about now, because there was a move happened, especially that's why you see Malinois used, is because they started working on drive. Uh, people started training drive as opposed to hard, cold, <laughs> uh, obedience style. Uh, <clears throat> Kohler's dogs weren't going to vary. They were not going to. They were not going to respond to prey drives. Uh, and, or other things. And a lot of these things I'm not going to explain in this video because it's just going to be too long. The people don't have attention for that and it's better served in another video. But anyway, so there's been a big move towards uh, prey drive and ball playing and tug of war is sort of part of that prey drive. And so with Malinois, you can get them to do that. They're not not the only dogs. But you can you look for this and then genetically you try to screen. It's much like looking for athletes. If you're looking for protection dog dogs in, in sport or in what I'm going to talk about, war dogs. And, and there are big differences in the genetics. Just like Olympic athletes, there are certain genetic makeups. You can't make everyone an athlete. You can't make every dog production dogs. And that can be just off of their size. For example, you're, you're not, you're not going to get a toy poodle uh, that could be able to stop anybody. They could bark, but and as far as a war dog goes, barking is not big. That's uh, going to get the dog killed and you killed too. So there's some big differences, and I'm about to go into that in a second. But you find that the prey drive is used a lot. The obedience training, they've started getting stylized with this prancing and the head up, looking up when they're what you would call healing, and in German, Fuss. It's uh, means foot really in German, but that's, you know, people want to use mixed uh, languages. Uh, that's a whole nother video. I will not go on in, into that right now. I'm going to try to stay narrow on this war dog versus protection sport. So a lot of people think that protection sport dogs, because they have high obedience, they're, they're athletes basically. And some people do don't expect much out of their dogs unless they're competing with them. I mean, they train them to compete and they compete. Well, otherwise they are not like, they don't require them to be overly obedient, uh, which is kind of bizarre. And that's one of the things I'll have to say about Kohler again, is that his dogs, while not trained with the, the high drive method, his dogs were solid at whatever level they were at. And all of his dogs passed CD, CDX usually. Uh, and he all definitely CD, but they were that way all the time. And they didn't have ups and downs and stuff because his training removed that, and it and it takes the edge off the, of the drive. So there's there's a difference in that. And uh, also now we get into with Kohler, I can get into what war dogs. Okay, so these protection sports like Ring, um, Mondial Ring, IPO Schutzen, and there's many others uh, that they initially train the dogs while using food and high drive and what they call luring, but the better term is leading, you can do a lot with that. And it's very quick and it's very fast. And for trick dogs, agility dogs, yeah, that is definitely the way to get something done. But it makes very, very fast progress. The thing is, it's not, it's, it's not gelled a lot of the times. And they, have a, they want to call it proofing nowadays. We just call it being stable. You know, the dog wasn't stable. If you could do, if the dog could heal, but it couldn't do the healing in a construction site, then wasn't he wasn't stable. 
And now there's a big difference. We're like, yeah, you can get them to do that. But things like the prey drive, uh, sees a squirrel or rabbit running across the path, the dog will go after him because that's more rewarding to the dog than staying around you. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why they got them focusing, looking up. Not all dogs can do you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a dachshund to be able to do that. This is a as a bizarre example, you're not going to get a dachshund his head up like a Malinois, uh, <clears throat> or that you can get a, a shepherd too. You can get them to bend their head. Those long, longer snout dogs work better uh, for that. So that's one of the reasons the attention, the focused attention, and they get points now in Schutzen for that sort of thing. And the same thing with the way that they heal. Uh, in AKC, that would be considered crowding. There is a reason, though, like in war dogs, like it's called contact healing. Uh, or even pressing, uh, they have. They can even press into your hand. That's one of the ways to train them. I'm not going to go into training techniques right now. But the thing is, that contact is important for war dogs. So things that would you would get penalized for in the AKC ring, for example, don't work well in hard reality. So this is what I'm going to get to. So now war dogs, war dogs, completely different than protection dogs. Now protection dogs are trained to Go for the sleeve or go for the suit. Uh, like if you're talking about the rings, they're going uh, ring sports. They're going for the ankles. Um, real war dogs have a different target completely. They're going to get the arm if it's there, uh, and they're but they're not going to be taught to go for legs because they're vulnerable. There's a lot of things people don't know. If 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 they're grabbing an enemy, uh, hitting him low, they're vulnerable to being stabbed, shot picked up, slammed, they're vulnerable. Uh, you can't have the war dog. Now on the arm, a lot of people want to talk about, some people say, oh, go for the inside of the arm, which is not available all the time. Because pe people don't, unless they're rearing back and they catch them with a stick in the back motion, they're not going to hit that. Um, that's also easy to get over the dog's head, come down and kill the dog, actually. So not for a war dog. War dogs are trained for a different target. I'm not going to talk about that right now. So, you, I mean, there are big differences. Protection dogs are not. Protection dogs are trained to go for the sleeve. Their prey drive is in the sleeve, not the man. So the war dog is fighting the man because if the, if, if the war dog were able to take your hand off, he's not going to keep messing with that hand. He's going back to you. Whereas a, an IPO dog, if he did get your hand off, that would be it. He's going to, he's going to quit because that's his prey as, as, to fighting the man. So there are different things used. Um, as I'm saying, the prey drive is used a lot with, well, basically that's what is used to train the dogs. And the, and the training is 90% genetic. And then it's all about your helper. Uh, some people call them a decoy, but in the training process, they're really a helper. They have to be very skilled. That is a major thing. It's not obedience because the, the attacking guy, the helper is the most important aspect of this. Now, when you're training uh, war dogs, another thing war dogs are doing, they're trained to drag the guy back. They want to pull him off balance where you have IPO dogs going in and hitting and knocking. Uh, that can work somewhat, but it doesn't keep the guy off balance because you want – you want if, if the dog hits and knocks the guy off balance, which is great, you want that dog in a war to grab him by the arm and pull him, drag him so that he's not able to – reach for a weapon and he's off balance and he's vulnerable and the dog will reattach, which is called rebiting uh, from that arm. Now, protection dog sports are taught about one bite, one hold, and they're, and they're graded on, on that, how that, how their mouth fits on that bite. And there's bite, 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 which is what a war dog is trained to do. And a war dog cannot be reinforced with food at all times, like a, uh, like you're doing with sport dogs. They also cannot do this bark and hold thing. That's going to get all killed. Uh, war dogs, there's several different types of war dogs. Uh, one of the best type, <laughs> the most useful, is, of course, is the, the bomb, uh, the bomb detection dog. Uh, now, training dogs for that, that won't go into, and you won't be able to do it if you don't have the actual C4 or the Simtex or what the bombs are made of. You need that material and that's very regulated. So very few people are capable of training the dogs and they get, that's why those dogs are $400,000 in the U.S. once the dog is done and <clears throat> trained. 
Now, if you go to what most people talk about when we're thinking about like attack dogs, guard dogs, possession or protection dogs, those type of dogs are what I'm talking about. That's where I've had the uh, experience with is with that type of war dog. And also another dog that's very important and very important in jungle is a sentry dog that detects because the dog's hearing is at least 10 times better than a human. Uh, their visual acuity for movement is better than a human. Uh, and their scent, this is where dogs blow us away. They are capable. We don't even know that this world exists of smells. They do. That's why they're, that's in their genetics. It's what they're doing. They know the world through smelling. You want to know the world through looking and a little bit back from auditory. That's why you cannot understand a dog. You cannot try to make a dog a person. A dog is not a person. You don't have his qualities. He's, he doesn't have ours. We communicate with language. His is nonverbal. But sentry dogs can detect enemy in jungle far better than any human begin to. And you cannot, in triple canopy jungle, it's old school. None of the satellite stuff doesn't work because the foliage is too hard. It's hard to use, uh, it's hard to use infrared sites and in, in that sort of thing in that environment. It's very, very much uh, dangerous, <laughs> close, zero distance in some points warfare. And you need as much help as you can get. And a dog is a major help. In Vietnam, when they were used, they saved countless lives. So that's another type of dog. So you have, you have bomb dogs, you have, uh, you know, attack dogs, to use that phrase, and you have sentry dogs, and you also have tracker dogs now, and you have people do search and rescue. Now, it's a lot of people think when you start getting dogs that are bred uh, with this, and it's just 90 something percent of it's genetic, like tracking and stuff like that. They don't even try to train them in obedience because they think it curbs their natural skills. That's sort of like the old thing of boxers shouldn't lift weights you know it's it's kind of uh it's going to pass that's going to go away but anyway but what i want to say in this video is that you see a lot of people on youtube talking about protection dog sports a few people talking about man stoppers that's sort of like the civilian thing you have a personal protection dog you have a family protection dog training those dogs is different if you really know what you're doing than training the sport dogs because one thing you can train uh, like the military does, it will use their fear drive because when a dog is scared, you get them scared at a certain thing in a certain disposition, he's going to fight. And you want that in a war dog. You don't want just prey mode because prey mode won't allow him to keep fighting the man. Fear mode will. So you have to have a mix of these. So I'm kind of covering these things. You're not going to find, uh, like I said, I have not seen anybody, even the guys who are huge in, in, in the sporting dog thing. And there's some big, big names. I mean, out here on YouTube, there are the majority don't know what they're doing. A bunch of them are stealing other people's stuff, trying to rehash it, uh, coming up with an ideology of only positive. Oh, like, that will not work. It's got to be real operant. And some people call, want to say balance, but it's really complete. Uh, and there's some good uh, balanced guys out there and women too. There, And then there is a couple incredible trainers uh but there's stuff you're not going to get for free just like everything the best people are not good because they're making a living trying to make a living from this not just to be known as a celebrity and i'm getting out here like just like i did with the language thing and exposing the truth uh, of what's going on because i do have like i said I, my background goes back further than these people i mean i have not trained as many dogs because i've been doing other things and i've been uh obviously a professional fighter it, traveling the world, living in many places, doing zero distance warfare training uh, for people and getting other skills. But I initially started long before these other people. And I have that. And I also went, once again, to reiterate, I went through a, uh, my psychology degree was at a place that had a very strong behavioral modification department at the time. It's not it's no longer there. But when I went through that, I went through those. So I know all that's all those things that you see Dunbar and prior and talking about the clickers with the sea, uh, sea world and all that stuff. I, yeah, I know all that. I did that. I did it with rats. So the thing is, I know that I'm bringing this out there. My background is extensive. I've seen, I know, uh, I pretty much got a clue on who are the best guys in the world, uh, in the world. 
I mean, I don't know everybody in Russia, for example, but the, the ones who are routinely turning out in sports, which is a good indication of how well they can train because the family training people who say, well, we don't compete. That's like guys saying, oh, I, I can teach you how to fight, but I've never had any fights. It's, it doesn't mean much, you know. So anyway, looking at those, I know who those people, I have a good indication of a lot of them, not, not all of them. I could, can't possibly know them. It's too many dog trainers around the world. And there are people who are innovating uh, in Europe and even in Eastern Bloc, Eastern European, especially for real war dogs, like I'm saying, because the training is different. There's a lot of things you don't have to do. You know, who cares about the prancing, healing aspect? Who cares about the scent work? Uh, and also the way that they they hit is what we call, and some people have other terms, but that's the old term. The way that they hit the man is different. The way that they drag the man is different. The way that they keep fighting the man is different. Um, you take a sleeve off against a dog that's a war dog, he's just going to keep going at you. You, you got to get out of there. Uh, so the back, the back tying and bucking boards and a bunch of other things a lot of people don't use uh, for protection sports, you use those with war dogs because, and we got to remember too, is, you know, Malinois, okay, war dogs used to be mastiffs or a mastiff style type of dog. Those were used by Romans, uh, Alexander the Great, uh, many, many, many different types of past cultures used war dogs. So it's not just these athletic Malinois that you see now or, or the Doberman. Uh, which I, I feel you have a great dog and you have a great dog, <laughs> in my opinion. There's been some crossbreeding going on, and I'm, I'm watching some people who are doing some things with Dutch Shepherds, which are, if you're up there, you consider Dutch Shepherds just a little bit better than Malinois, uh, and, and creating sort of a crossbreed, which is what every dog was. It was a crossbreed anyway. So I just hope that you get an idea that the war dog, is a totally different type of animal, as it were, than these protection. The training is different, too. Now, can an incredible IPO trainer, rings trainer, train a war dog? Yeah, yeah, if they, they just change some things, get some a little bit more thing, because they, the, they have the background for it. Um, but you're not, they can't be trained on just food because you're not going to be out in the field with them in war, giving them food. It won't happen. Uh, you can't do this endless, oh, good, 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 yes, yes, which seems to be, it's making me nauseated that people are doing this. You can't do that. Real dogs that have to work in real life and death situations have to be trained differently. And that's where Kohler was coming from. That's one of the reasons why people who uh, deride him have no clue that he came from World War II. And his methods worked with every type of dog. Uh, do I think that they, sh they shouldn't be upgraded? No, I do think that he should upgrade some of it. Some of the stuff that he did is an incredible today. But anyway, so that is to give uh, indication because you're not going to find people. You're, you're not going to find. Uh, I mean, I'll throw out some names of some big time guys. Um, you're not going to find Michael Ellis talking about war dogs. You're not going to find David Croyer, who's you know, even better than Ellis. You're not going to find him talking about war dogs. So I just want to set people straight on that and give you, like I did in languages, some real information uh, that you won't get anywhere else. Anyway, so I'll get back to upper and conditioning and other things. So you guys can uh, uh, stay tuned because like I said, I'm returning to, to dog training, <laughs> whether my haters like it or not. Um, there's quite a few. There's some that are obsessed with me. It's, uh, it's, it's it's a pathology. It's like that celebrity stalking pathology thing. Uh, same that David Michael Michael Gate shot John Lennon. So I got sort of that thing going on, you know. But anyway, so uh, like, subscribe, stay tuned, uh, share this because I really don't have a dog channel. I got <laughs> I got a channel of, of languages. I got a channel of uh, personal protection, self defense training on here. So. You can help me out there, all right? All right, so, okay, guys, women, everybody, take care.